Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caroline and today I will share with you the top three things I always think about before I go on vacation in a foreign country. So it's the summer season and it's the season of travel and maybe you are going abroad this year, maybe not. But I thought I would share with you my top three things that I always remember to think about and research and so on before I go abroad. The first thing I always research when I'm going abroad is the healthcare system of the country I'm going to because I want to make sure I can get the treatment I need if something goes wrong, if I have a Crohn's flare or something like that, I want to make sure I can get the help that I need. So I check, you know, the city I'm going to, do they have hospitals? Is it modern hospitals? Is it, you know, up to date on treatments and technology? Um, also, is it a place where I can expect that they can communicate with me? Some countries, people really don't speak English. Um, so how terrifying would it be to be in a hospital with no one to communicate with? Last year I went to Paris and a lot of French people do not speak English, but some of them actually do. So I thought, okay, you know what? A hospital in a city like Paris where there's a lot of tourism, somebody probably speaks English in the hospital. So I was pretty confident with that. This year I'm going to Scotland and clearly they speak English there. So that's not really an issue, but it's just like, is it going to be possible for me to communicate so that, you know, I get the correct treatment that I need. Uh, I also always want to check up on the emergency phone number. So like if I need an ambulance, something like that, I, I'm going to call this number <laughs> just in case I need it. The second thing I always make sure to have an order before traveling abroad is insurance. I want to be 100% sure that I'm not going to get bankrupt um, from traveling if something is to happen. So what I always do is I always make sure that I can be insured by my insurance company. And to do this, when you have a chronic illness, at least in Denmark, you have to fill out an applic application for health insurance on your travel. And then they have to see some doctor's uh, documents uh, to see if I've been stable within the last two months before going abroad. Uh, so, and, and that's always a little bit nerve wracking, right? Because am I going to get approved? Am I not going to get improved? Um, last year I was in France and, um, France is a member of the EU and in the EU, everybody has uh, a blue, little blue card. <laughs> that's an insurance card, um, that we can use in all of EU. So that's basically, we have access to healthcare in all of EU. The card covers what the civilians in the country are entitled to in the public healthcare system. So there might be, you know, in Denmark, we cover 100%, except when you buy medicine and stuff, but we cover 100% in hospitals and stuff, but they might not do that uh, everywhere. So I always like to check up when I travel within the EU and I'm from EU, I always like to check up on, okay, so how much is actually paid through taxes in that particular country. I went to France last year and it was 80% in a public hospital that was paid for. So I was like, okay, that's cool. And I actually got denied last year because I had within the last two months before my vacation, I had been briefly admitted to the hospital with pain in my bowel that the doctors really couldn't explain. So I was actually denied, but because it was an EU country and because I was covered up to 80%, I thought to myself, okay, you know what? That's okay. I can survive that. I don't have to worry too much about it. Um, so I took a chance anyways. This year I'm going to Scotland and they are no longer a member of the EU. So that, all of a sudden I needed to be sure that I could get, you know, insurance. Um, so, and I was approved this year, but it's kind of nerve wracking that you have to do this, especially when you're going outside of the EU because it's like, what if I didn't get approved, right? I mean, Scotland is a three hour flight, so I could relatively easy get home if everything went to south, everything went south, but, but still it's like, would I take the chance? Would I not take the chance? Mm, depending a little bit on how I am, I think. 
I would never take the chance if I was going to the US, for example. If I can't get insured, I'm not going to the US. I mean, even, even people who live in the United States are being bankrupt by medical bills, even though they have insurance and end up in the street. Like we all heard the stories, right? I'm not gonna end up having a billion dollar debt to the, um, to the American healthcare system. That's not gonna happen. So I would cancel my trip if I was going there. Um, but Scotland, I would probably there if I was feeling okay. But, I, but it is a little nerve wracking, right? Because you, you have to apply within those two months before you go because it's like, otherwise it doesn't make sense. And you're just sitting there being like, mm, interesting. <laughs> Am I going on vacation this year? The last thing I always make sure to research is what it takes to bring your medicine to the country I am traveling to. This is really important. Again, within the EU and the Schengen countries, it's really easy to bring your medicine. Uh, the Schengen countries consist of 25 EU countries and a few non-EU countries such as Switzerland and Norway. And this is like a cooperation made between countries in Europe to make it easier to bring your medicine. I think that's pretty cool. So as long as your medicine is not euphoric, you can actually bring it as long as you have it in your original package and don't bring more than you need and all that, but then you can bring it without any type of documentation. Um, if it is euphoric, so something like morphine or methylphenidate that I take for my ADD, uh, you have to get some documents on that, but that's very easy because you can literally just go online and fill out an application, go to the pharmacy and pick it up and they sign it and that's basically it. And it's just an application saying, well, I take this methylphenidate, I take uh, 30 milligrams twice a day, I'm going for five days, so I'm gonna need uh, 10 pills. So bring 10 pills with me, maybe actually a little more because you are allowed to bring for a few more days in case something happens and so you don't run out of medicine. And you know, and how many travel days you have and like what's your doctor's name like something like that and then they print it out and they sign it and then that's basically it so it's pretty easy when you travel within the Schengen countries this year i'm going abroad i'm going to scotland and that's the uk so i was like i need to figure out um how to bring my medicine and of course the general rule is always bring your medicine in the original package so they can see what it is because if you bring pills in you know maybe a little box where you can dose your medicine and there's a red pill there's a blue pill there's a green pill they can't see what that is they don't know what you yeah, sure you can be standing there saying it's for my depression or my whatever but you know they they, they can't see that so of course that might cause some trouble for you in the airport or the train station or wherever you are being checked up on uh and <laughs> So always original packaging and always the amount that you need plus one or two days. That is allowed because it's like, okay, I'm here for a week, but I have medicine for like uh, nine days just in case my flight gets canceled and I have to wait a day or whatever so that I don't run out. That is perfectly acceptable. Um, so that's really, really important. So that's a general rule. Other than that, there can be different rules from different countries. Some are more strict than others and i didn't really know how strict the uk actually was so i went to the uh, british uh, the website of the british embassy to find out and i was like i have no idea like i like i couldn't find anything that really said it was all about something you know when you're bringing in like if you are a pharmaceutical bringing something into the country or something like that like you know is where i was like I, that's not me i, I don't know so i ended up actually calling the British embassy here in Denmark to ask like, what do I need? And they said original packaging, not more than you need, blah, blah, blah. And then they said that, you know, I could actually go to the pharmacy and have them print out my prescriptions just so I have some kind of a document as well on my medicine. And I was like, okay, so I'll do that. <laughs> um, another thing I wanna mention when it comes to medicine, and this is because I, I, I hear a lot and I've seen a lot as a pharmacist technician about, you know, people who really don't understand how to transport their medicine. So your medicine always needs to be in your handbag, in your handbag. And there are two reasons for this. The first reason is that it gets freezing cold 
in the back of the plane where the luggage is. And not all medicine can take that kind of cold temperatures. So you actually might ruin your medicine or make it less effective. And that's a problem, of course. The second reason, and this is the reason that makes me sometimes wonder what, like how this is not a logical action for you to bring it in your handbag. I'm like, how can you not? Because we've all heard about people whose luggage never arrived, right? Um, and then some, sometimes they don't even get it when they're on vacation. They end up getting it when they get home. Uh, so if you have your medicine that's, you know, could be completely ruined anyway, but if you have your meds in the luggage in the back of the plane and it doesn't arrive, you're going to be in a foreign country without your life-depending medicine. That's why you need it in your handbag. Uh, and because let's face it, you, you can't just walk into a random hospital in the country you travel to and be like, my luggage didn't come with my meds in it. So I'm going to need this, this, this. Of course not. They don't have any documents on you. They don't know if you're telling the truth. Like, I mean, so, and of course, could it be done? Maybe, but it's going to be a lot of like communicating back and forth between the doctor in the country you travel to and the doctor back home and like maybe there's a time difference so you can't even get in contact with the doctor you need to and la 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 it's very very complicated to get a prescription abroad um so always bring your medicine in the handbag that was just a little bonus a little bonus so everyone that was today's video i hope you really liked it and you know if you're going traveling this year please make sure to be insured have all your meds and know exactly what to do if something happens in the country you travel to and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel like this video share the video turn on notifications you can also go follow me on my instagram that's also called the art of being ill have a blessed rest of the day and have a nice trip if you are going on vacation <music>